Hey, welcome back. This is Jeff Larson, Site Tech Intermountain, on doing the SiteWorks training videos. I felt like in the last video that stockpile was a little bit too perfect, so I found another one over here. It's got a little bit more ups and downs. It's still flattened out on the top pretty good, but we got a lot of ins and outs on the bottom here. The slopes out here have some slope that, that bump out a little bit. Let me show you this other side. I just want to teach you how to use your data collector and your SiteWorks program, how to go and gather this stockpile right here without having to worry about breaking your drone out. The drone's a good option. It's a lot easier. No one likes walking stockpiles, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do a stockpile uh, and we can do it now and run the report and have the numbers within seconds instead of having to wait for five or six hours for the report. Um, you can also do depressions like this over here. If you had a basement or a pond, you can run your volume boundary around the top and then run some shots down by the water. But there's always scenarios, I know it from back when I was doing this, that someone needs to know, hey, how much material is in this pile left real quick? You know, we need to know how much to import tomorrow or how much is left for what we're trying to do. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do it. Okay, so once again, I'm going to create a brand new work order. It's a good practice to keep it all separate. Uh, we're going to go to change project, and I'm going to create a new one and call this the uh, milled asphalt pile. Keep fat finger in numbers here. We're going to go ahead and put a date. That's something I always did too, 6 uh, 14 23, just so I know when it was done in case it changes. Now, I'm going to run the design or not. The design is totally up to you. If you need to run the report against design and know how much is there plus the design you want to. But in this scenario, I know that out here is that uh, potato, dirt, clay. It's not the same as that stockpile. So I'm not even going to worry about running my design because I'm just going to run it as a stockpile as is. No design, hit accept. Then it kind of cleans my screen up a little bit. In this video, I'm also going to show you how to use the walking mode here. Instead of standing and me physically taking the shots myself, I'm going to show you how to do the walking one. We're not going to do vehicle because I'm not on a vehicle, but you can do a couple different ways of actually taking the shots. I don't have the backpack with the pole here, and I don't have the little wheel, but I'll just still show you how either way. So for standing, we'll leave it on that. My rod height, I'm using my quick release right here. We'll go into the measure type, which is the roller stuck in the mud, and we're going to do a new line. I'm going to call it the base which is going to be my volume boundary around the very bottom. Everything inside will run the report off of it. So where you've got all these ins and outs, it is good. Take The more shots that you take, the better. Because if I were to take a shot here and then right there, knowing that it goes in a little bit, think of everything in a digital string line. If I go from here to there, but I don't take this inner shot right here, it's going to go from my top shot there to the bottom, and it's going to leave a void right there. That's where your numbers don't turn out quite as good if you're going to use the data collector. So the more the better. So let's go ahead and just take the shots all the way around. I've got my tilt compensator on so I don't have to level up quite as good every time I take the shot. You need to at least give the rover just a second to initialize. You can't just slam it down and expect it to give you a good reading. But as for the level, I don't have to be level. I just need to let it down and hit that button. Be cautious on too many highs and lows. If there's gouges on like this other side of the pile here, you don't want to get too many highs or lows because where you're letting the volume boundary be the base. If you take some low ones, there may be some string lines that go across at that elevation. So it's just doing this over and over and getting some practice with it. So I'm going to come up here to this little point, take all these little ins and outs. Honestly, guys, if you're going to make the effort to walk a stockpile, you might as well take the effort to take some extra shots. So I'm going to re-reference where I'm at. Looks like I started up there. So here at my last shot, I don't need to connect back to that same spot right there. I can hit this auto-close, uh, the three solid lines with the one dotted. It finishes me out, disconnects me from the line, and auto-closes it. So i got a boundary. Now what I'm going to do is go back into measure types. Stay on the same new line. I'm going to call it the top, and I'm going to do a volume, or excuse me, a break line. Don't make it just a line, or it's going to be northern Easting's elevation, but it's not going to be able to make a surface out of it. It needs to be an actual break line. So it doesn't matter exactly where you start on the pile. 
But I'm pretty confident this is all looking pretty good right here up to this point. But I've got a little bit of a wing right there. So just envision bottom slope that I took to top. It's going to make a straight line. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start one right here. But if I really want to get this little wing right here, I'm just here to show you guys how to do it. You do need to get the low point of it. Don't cross your outer boundary. And you want to come back up this little ridge line right here. Then that for sure is going to catch any little bit right there. And over the entire length of the stockpile, could be add up to be a half a dump truck or a full dump truck load. So now I'm going to run this ridge line right here. But where you've got these little bubbles out, bubbles right here where it comes out, make sure you go out and get every little bit of it. Let me finish this line out and then I will show you uh, the option for having it take the shots as you either lock it or if you had the rover on a wheel or on a vehicle. I'm going to get this little wing right here. I'm making sure that my line, as I zoomed in and on it, does not cross itself. It will give me a warning if it does. So coming down through the middle here of this pile, I can switch this to a mode now where I can just hover this over the ground. Uh, if I go back to the guy standing there and go to walking, what I can do is say, yes, I'm using my quick release vertical height, and I can drop this bar down and say, okay, fix distance, take a shot, fix time, or measure one level. I got tilt compensating. I'm not worried about measured with level or the time I'm going to do fixed distance. It defaults to 16 feet. As I walk that, it would do it. And any vertical change is 652. It'll do it also. This is helpful if you have the backpack on the walking stockpiles, but I just want to show you. I'm going to change that to every six feet uh, horizontal. And I'm going to change this to uh, 0.32. Then you've got a little play button at the bottom right here. So now as you hit play, make sure you just walk and hold your rover right above the dirt. And you'll see it's going to start taking shots. This would make more sense if you had the wheel on there or if you were just walking it. But you can see as I'm holding this rover right above the ground and just letting it nick the ground, it's taking shots. So that's the way to do it that way. And if you're going to stop that mode, you got to hit a little stop button in the bottom right here. I'm going to just go back to standing to finish out that other line over there. But you can switch in between that while you're still on the same exact line. Okay, now that I'm done with that, you can see the red line is still tagging to me. I'm not 100% done yet to where I'm going to hit menu and measure. I'm going to go back into measure type, and I'm going to do a point. And we're just going to call this uh, uh, the top also, but I'm going to leave this as a surface. I'm going to show you what this does because you, instead of hitting it feature, you can leave it at surface, and you can fill in a couple spots with just a single point. So if I had like a low point right here, I can just fill in some of these spots. If I felt like the slope needed a couple more shots, once again, I'm just trying to show you how you don't have to do brake lines everywhere. Now I can go in if I needed to and fill in any of those little tiny areas that I missed. So now that I've got it done, you can zoom in and see I've got some single shots and I've got brake lines everywhere and a volume boundary. That's all you need to do. You can walk off the pile and run the report right now. So if you go into your menu button, and go down to Kogo, you go to uh, Review and Edit Data, and right here, the 3D box on the left side, once again, if you need to, hit the question mark on the top right. It'll tell you all the different things that are in there by name, because if not, you just have the icon on the left, and it'll highlight it on the top left. So I'm going to compute the volume. It says select boundary. All i got to do is touch the boundary. Don't push and hold it, or it'll do a, a free click. So at that drop-down bar, you can see I can run it against a stockpile, or a measured elevation, meaning I could do a flat floor on it, but I don't want to do that. I made that boundary around the outside, so I'm going to do it as a stockpile, and I'm not going to add an expansion or a shrinkage. If I did, you could go ahead and put an expansion of, let's say, 10% in there. We'll go ahead and compute the volume, and right there I get my instant report, 395.383 uh, on the cubic yards. 
So no fill because it didn't go into a scenario where I did a flat floor or against the design. That's where you get a total fill as if there was any um, ups and downs to where the floor on the bottom recognized the fill. But we get a cut the whole time, get a base area boundary. You can give it a description right here and call it the, uh, the millings. If you hit accept, it would save it in the log file, but you have this little folder top thing at the top right here that looks like a clipboard. If you watched any of my other videos, I showed you that you could go in here and give it a report title and say, hey, this is the millings. Oops, I put two L's in there. File, uh, same thing, 614.23. Report, the comments is uh, what's left, I don't know. And up to uh, three pictures. So you can stand back and actually take some pictures of each end. I actually tell you that because I used to work on job sites where people would steal out of our bedding sand pile and gravel pile when we weren't looking, the plumbers and electricians. So you can take the pile or the shot and then take more shots along the side right here to prove what it looked like when that report was taken. And all those pictures and all those shots, the report, everything right here is saved together. So you can go ahead and hit save. And it creates that report and it says it's saved in the work orders output folder. If we needed to look at what that was, you can go into your Windows button. Go to your SCS 900 data, which is your root folder. And we'll go down here to the southwest corner of Site Tech. So as soon as we go in there, you go to your work orders right here. And you go into the one that we did, which is the milled asphalt pile. And in there, you have a media and outputs folder. So in there, I've got a task log and I've got a PDF report, mill pile 614. If I open that up. Okay, so as soon as you get in here, you can see the report title. I could have put a header on there, but I didn't. It's got the time when I did it, the name of the design, if I had one. It just gives you a lot of information and it's a nice report that can be handed off to someone. Well, hopefully this helped with uh, running a stockpile measurement and SiteWorks. Thank you for watching this from Site Tech Intermountain, SiteWorks training videos.